Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the CV axles on a Gen 3 Montero. So in the case of this Gen 3 I've got behind me, this is a buddy of mine, and he has torn axle boots all the way across. So his CV axles are actually good, and instead of just replacing them with an aftermarket one, I'm gonna show you how to rebuild the OEM ones. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this car up in the air and we're gonna take off the driver's side wheel. So with the wheel off, the next thing I need to do is take the center cap off so that I can get to the axle nut. In order to do that, just like a punch and a hammer or a chisel and a hammer, and you kind of work this edge right on the side, hit a little bit over here, and then work your way around it. And then once you have a lip up, you can take a pry bar, and you can pop that right off. There's your axle nut. And which way was the piece going to have to bend out? Once you have the cotter pit out, then you're gonna take a 32 millimeter socket and just zip this off. All right, so the axle nut is off. Now we have to actually get the shaft out. So uh, the easiest way that I've found to do this is you have to remove quite a few things, but it's worth it. So we're gonna start over here by removing the tie rod. Then we're gonna remove this upper ball joint. I'm gonna go ahead and opt to take out these three 12 millimeter bolts. It's gonna drop the thing all the way down. You have to disconnect this brake line um, just by pulling this pin. You should be able to lean this over enough to snake this shaft out of the hub, and then you can pull that CV axle out. So I'm gonna try to get all of that disconnected and see if we can get this thing undone. Yeah. Good enough to get you home. Hey, going right? No. <laughs> you can get pretty much. Ugh. There we go. It's not the right tool for the job, but it did work. Okay. Oh, I gotta disconnect this ABS line as well. Oh yeah, okay, sweet. That's totally out of the way now, awesome. All right, so I just got the end of the CV shaft out. I was able to sneak it out just barely. Now on the driver's side here, this guy just slides in. It's got a little snap ring. It's got a little circlip on the backside. And so you have to pull on this and you just gotta pull on it until it comes out. And hopefully it doesn't get stuck up in there. Hopefully this doesn't come apart and it sticks together as you can see it's pretty gnarly in there. So hopefully we can get this cleaned up and rebuilt. But the idea here is you just wanna get this as straight as possible and give it a couple pulls back until it pops out of there. Now it's possible depending on how full your differential is that you'll lose some diff fluid from there. So I advise putting a pan down there to catch it, which is what I'm gonna do right now. You need two, one for the inner, one for the outer. Oh, that came out so easy. All right, so here's that snap ring I was talking about, or a circlip, I don't know what you call it right there, but that's what you're trying to break free. Thankfully, this one came out, no problem. Over here on the passenger side, things are a little different. You still have to pop off this cap and get to the wheel nut or the axle nut. But on this side, you can see, instead of it being something that slips into the differential, you actually have a shaft that goes through here and it attaches with these nuts. So I think it's a 12 and a 14. It's a 14 on this side and a 12 on that side. And that's how you're gonna take that off. There's four of them. So you just rotate it around, take those off. The bolt is gonna stay captured between this diff carrier and the back of this flange. So that's no big deal, but make sure you keep these nuts and washers. But then this is gonna pop right out. And this should be the same process to get this off. So we'll take off these upper control arm or these, uh, these upper ball joint bolts. We'll also take off this tie rod like we already have and we'll go ahead and pull out these brake lines as well. That should be able to lean it forward and we'll be able to pop that thing off. Okay. Okay. Brake line removed. That one was not as clean. came off, no problem. All right, watch your ears, it's gonna be loud. There we 
one thing to keep in mind when you are rotating this around is sometimes what will happen is this will rotate and then one of these bolts will come and it'll stick out like this and then you're going to rotate and they're going to hit these other bolts and so it'll become impossible to move. So make sure that these are all the way in or all the way towards the outside of the vehicle while you're rotating it. It'll make it a lot easier. Nice. One thing to be very careful of when you're getting this CV axle stub out is uh, sometimes they get seized in the hub here. And if you hit this with a hammer, you'll actually deform these threads and make it really hard to get an axle nut on. And it could potentially screw up uh, the torque on this and make it unsafe. So they've got this little point in the middle. You can get a drift and you can put it in there or an air hammer. And if you hit right there, it won't damage the thread. So that's the preferred method for how to get this all the way through this hub. All right, so it's the same process as before. You just want to get this guy out. Gonna rotate this all the way forward. You can just barely sneak that shaft past there. And then because you've undone the bolts, you can pull this one out and it's done. So now I've got the CV axles out on the bench and we're gonna tear them down. As you can see, both of the inner boots are torn. And this is what I find is usually the problem. Usually the outer boots are fine. I think that's partially because of this perforation. There's just way more perforations here. There's about double on this side. And so it can flex a little more and this one doesn't seem to wear, but these tear all the time. And so you can see that they're torn and this one's still in pretty good shape. This one's feeling a little rough. So we're hopefully gonna clean this up and, and hopefully get some of that movement back back. Um, if not, it it's still probably a little better off than running an aftermarket one, um, but we'll see. So anyways, we're going to tear these down. I'm going to start on the differential side. So on the inside here, because these are the ones that are torn. And uh, even though these aren't torn, um, I've got the boots for it anyways. So I'm going to be replacing those as well. But I'm going to start here and you can see they've got these metal bands that go around and uh, there's kind of two ways to take these off. You can either cut them with some tin snips or something, or you can take an angle grinder and you can just kiss it real quick uh, and cut those off. Um, they will, there are replacements in here. So I'm going to get those taken off and get inside of this boot. All right, now that I've got this off, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this boot with a utility knife here. Makes it a little easier to get in here and figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna just slice this whole thing off. All right, as you can see, this is a very messy job. And uh, I started to clean it off in here and you can see the snap ring right there. That snap ring is what's gonna hold in this whole cage of ball bearings. And so you've gotta get a pick in there and go ahead and pull that snap ring out and then the whole thing will separate. There's the snap ring out, this should separate. Boom, just like that. There's the inner cup, and here's all the ball bearings. All right, continuing to clean this out, you can see I've cleaned off this bottom part, and here's a snap ring, and that's gonna hold the rest of this on, and that's what you need to take off in order to get the new CV boot on. There's the snap ring off. And there you go, there's the, there's the cage off. Okay, so I went ahead and took this one all the way apart to show you guys what can happen if one of the balls falls out and that you don't need to worry about it. You can just put this back together. So this is a good time to inspect these. You can see there's a little bit of wear right there. It's mostly covered in oil, but you can see there's a little hot spot in the metal. This is not something to be concerned about. That's gonna to be totally fine. That's really normal. So I've got this part right here. And as far as I can tell, this is non-directional. Now, again, that's, that's what I'm saying based on my observation, as far as I can tell. And now this one, this has got a taper towards it. So if you want to uh, reinstall these ball bearings, let's say you wanted to pull these out so you could clean them or whatever, it's really easy to do. So the first thing you're gonna do is take this part and you're gonna insert it into the kind of cup right there. And you're gonna do it through the non-tapered side. It's gonna drop in and you can kind of see right there, there's like a lip 
inside of there. And so you got to get it in that lip and then you got to get past it so it can rotate and it can kind of pivot on there. That's one of the friction points. Okay. Then you're going to take one of these balls and the easiest way to do it is just very lightly take a hammer and just tap it in. These will hold it just enough. And when it, once it goes inside the cup, it'll hold it permanently. But these cages are meant to be just tight enough that you can squeeze them in. I don't think I can squeeze them by hand. Oh, that one I did squeeze by hand. And so you can go around, whether you tap it with a hammer, it can be a rubber mallet too. Um, you just push these in. So if you end up losing a ball, if it ends up falling out, no big deal. Just come in here and just press these back into place. And boom, there it's reassembled. So here's another look at that cage. And you can see this is moving around pretty good. There's your splines. It's got six ball bearings in it. Some of the uh, aftermarket ones have three. In fact, I'll show a video right here of me tearing another one apart. Um, and you can see kind of the difference between the aftermarket and the OEM. I wanted to shoot a quick video since I'm doing the CV swap on my Gen 2 Montero to show you guys why it's important that you guys maintain your OEM CVs. So a lot of people, if you've been around the Montero world, you hear aftermarket CVs, no matter what they are, they are garbage. And that is true. The OEM ones are actually really, really stout, but just like anything, the boots go bad. And so what people do is they pull them out. You can't find OEM ones or they're really expensive if you can find them. And so they replace them with aftermarket ones. Now, not all aftermarket ones are going to be made quite like this, but I wanted to show you a quick difference here. So you can see my CV, um, it was actually leaking water in here, and so this got all rusty and it was getting crunchy. And you can see right here, this is caged ball bearings, and that's on the outer side, and that's good. But then, when you get on the inside, it's these guys right here. And you'll notice a few things. One, there's less of them, and two, it's just pretty small, okay? So if you compare this to this, um, this size isn't, it's, it's not impressive by any means. And so those go into right here and there's just those three contact points and that's the aftermarket one. Now the OEM one is a little different. If I can get this boot off, I'm replacing this with a new boot. This is an OEM one that I got. And you can see right there, it's got the same ball bearing construction. It's way, it's got a way hardier um, cage for it. And there's six of them. And so this is on the inside and on the outside. And so that's why it's important. And you can even see the size comparison between these, you probably can't quite tell. This one is bigger. So this, this whole body of the actual, the, now the shafts are the same size, right? Cause they, they slide in, but this whole body of the CV is actually larger and stronger. This is looking pretty good. It's moving around pretty good. It's not essential that you get all of the grease out of this. If this has been, uh, if it's got rust on it or anything like that, it's probably toast. And so you don't want to even bother with it. But most of the time that grease is okay. I'm not super adamant about cleaning it all out. The new boots and new kit will have new grease to put in there. So I've got that out and now I'm looking at the rest of the CV shaft. And while I'm in here and I've got an exposed shaft, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the inner boot, or sorry, the outer boot, and then I'm gonna replace that as well. The nice thing about doing this is this side is already exposed, so I can actually take this boot off and slide the new one on without having to disassemble this side of the hub. So I'm gonna to get to cutting these two off. Now I'm separating this boot. I'm going to go ahead and slide it this way and get it off of the shaft. As you can see, this one is also very messy. So I'm going to get it cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to try to get some of this grease out. Um, not all of it, but I figure if I'm going to put new grease in, I can't have too much grease. Otherwise it'll overfill, overfill that boot. So I might as well get some of it out while I have access to it. So now let's look at the new boots going in. These ones are from Lusa Overland, like I mentioned before. This one is going to be the inner one. Again, it's gonna have less of these perforations, so that's how you know this is the inside one. Also, it's gonna come with a few parts. Um, you can see here, these are kind of the hose clamps to get those on. I'll talk more about that in a second. And it's gonna come with another snap ring. It's also gonna come with these parts. You got another circlip and another snap ring. So now to reassemble the outer boot. Again, it's the one with more perforations. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of WD-40 on the inside of this, even though the shaft is pretty lubed up. That's gonna make it easier to slide it on because this, this is the most resistance it's gonna face right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get that on this end, slide it all the way over and boom, it's on there. Okay, but before I put this together, I'm gonna install the new grease. So this kit from Luso Overland, it's got new grease in it. I'm just gonna cut that pack open. 
and I want to squeeze all of this grease into this boot. I find it easier to put on the boot side than try to get it over here. This bearing's already got stuff packed into it. And so I'm gonna squeeze as much of this as I can into here. Again, it's a mess. Wish my glove hadn't torn. Okay, now I've got it in there. Get as much of it in there as I can. And now I'm gonna put these two together. There you go. Make sure that this is all the way around and it's in the groove. Now on to the inside shaft. First thing I'm going to do is take the boot and I'm going to slide it on. Before I put anything else on, the boot's got to go all the way on. I'm going to slide it all the way down. The boot is on. You can go ahead and line up the splines. Slide that guy back on to there. Since it's provided, I'll go ahead and throw on this new snap ring. Now this is a different style. However, it will do the job just as well and it's not worn out and fatigued like the other one. All right, make sure that's nice and seated into there. When you're putting this back together, make sure you put it back together the same way you took it apart. It should actually only go in one way, and that's with this kind of dish, this lip facing outside. So you can see the concave part is actually kind of faced in towards the center of the axle. Next, you're gonna grab your CV cup. Good to clean this out, get new fresh grease in it. Yep, went ahead and cleaned that out. And now for this one, I'm actually gonna put all of the grease in here. Since, I, uh, since I've taken it all the way apart, I figure I might as well fill it up there. Mmm, that's so good. Now with the new grease installed, I'm gonna go ahead and put these two back together. Just line up the ball bearings. One thing that can make this hard is if these balls are sticking out at all, the cup won't go on, but if you just kind of squeeze them just like I did, you're able to get that on there. And you can rotate it around. You can already hear that new grease is making its way into the bearings. You can see as I move this around, it's already coming up through the cage, through the ball. That's perfect. That'll work its way in. Over time, that thing will be lubricated forever. Almost forgot this step. Go ahead and put this snap ring back in to hold that whole cup assembly in place. It should click in just like it did when it came out. So it's right here on the edge of the cup. Now that we're done with that, go ahead and slide this boot back over. Make sure that it sits firmly in this groove here, and then make sure that this one sits down in this valley. So I actually pulled it a little further that I should have to push it back. And there you go, that's down in that groove, this is in that groove, and this one, as you can see, is rebuilt as well. So this is ready to have clamps put on it. So let's talk about clamping options. So provided in the Luso Overland kit with these boots is uh, an OEM style clip. Now, if you have this as an option, these are pretty slick, they're easy to use, and if you have the tool for them, they can be very effective. So basically what you do, you throw this around, you get it pretty close to as tight as you can, and you lock it in right there, and then you pinch this, and that's what kind of takes up that last bit of slack, and it sits down in here just like a hose clamp would. Now, the problem with that is if you do not have a tool that's gonna do that, you can really damage these if you're using something like these pliers because as you put pressure on them you're going to squeeze it and then you're actually going to cut it and that's no good you could theoretically modify one of these so that you could pinch that down or you could do what i do which is zip tie it so i just throw zip ties on here if you get enough pressure on it it's really not a big deal these are not a high stress item it's not pulling and pushing back and forth that's what all these perforations are for so i'm just going to throw some zip ties on it and this one's going to be dialed it's worth noting if you're doing the zip tie method you will have to use either an extra long zip tie or two zip ties if you want to get this other one on the outside because it is just a little bit bigger The last step is gonna be replacing this snap ring right here. 
the kit comes with an extra one. And so rather than put this one back in, even though it's probably fine, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one instead. All right. So I got the new snap ring on, but honestly, I'm kind of 50, 50 on this. One of the things that I haven't figured out how to do is I end up stretching these quite a bit when I pull them on and off. And so there's a lot more slop and it'll probably go into the diff just fine, but it might make pulling the diff back out or pulling this end out of the diff harder. And so um, when I go to put this in, you'll see I put a bunch of lubrication on this that helps uh, it go in and seat well. But you honestly might just leave that snap ring. Um, it might be worth it. Otherwise, you might run into some issues. But either way, I replace this snap ring. So there you have it, one rebuilt front CV axle. Now, as you can see, not that hard of a job, requires some toolage like snap ring pliers and stuff. But other than that, it's just really messy. So now that I've got this one done, this one's ready to go in the car, but I've got to do this other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out as well. All right, so now we're back on the vehicle side of things. I've got the CV shaft, it's all rebuilt, and we're gonna get it in there. So this one is the passenger side. It's got these four bolts that are gonna go through and actually bolt it to that extension flange or the extension shaft. And so I've gotta make sure that these line up with the bolts that are already in there. And so it's a little different than the other side. I'll explain how the other one works when we get to it. But you just wanna make sure that these are all lined up. And then you gotta sneak a washer and a nut through here to secure it to the actual hub. All right, so I got it slid in there. Here's the washer and the nut, and I'm gonna go ahead and get these started. That way it doesn't fall off of that shaft as I'm trying to finagle this into the wheel bearing. So there's all those nuts in there. I've just got them hand tight, and that's gonna keep it from falling out of that shaft while I get the stub shaft in here. Once you get that CV shaft in, you can go ahead and attach this upper ball joint to the upper control arm. Now that these are tightened down, it's time to reinstall your clips for your brake lines and reinstall this ABS wire back into the little clips that hold it up as well. Don't forget to come back in here and tighten up all four of these bolts holding the CV shaft to the other shaft. So the last step we're gonna do in wrapping up this job on the passenger side is to put on the washer and the axle nut. Now, it's important that you guys torque this down to the actual specification. If it's too loose, the wheel bearing is going to wear faster. If it's too tight, it's also gonna wear faster. The torque spec on this axle nut is 188 foot pounds, 188 foot pounds. So that's a ton of torque. You're probably gonna, if you don't have a big torque wrench, you're probably gonna have to rent one from an auto parts store, but that's what you need to put on that. So the way you tighten this down, because if you, if you put torque on this, it's going to spin. There's two ways you can do it. The first way is you can actually put the wheel back on. You can pop out the center cap and you can get an axle nut in there, a 32. And then you can lower the whole thing down and tighten it. Then pop the whole thing off and then reinstall this cup here. Or the other thing you can do is you can have someone jump in the car and they can slam on the brakes and then you should be able to put a wrench on this and torque on it. Whichever one's easier for you, that's what I would recommend. But this needs to be torqued down to 188 foot pounds. And if you don't like either of those techniques, this is a third way you can do it as long as you're really careful. All you gotta do is put a pry bar or something that's not going to bend in between these studs so that when you turn it clockwise, it's not going to rotate. And then you put your torque wrench on here and give it a spin. Very last step is to install this cotter pin and then pound on this dust cap.
Okay, now over on the driver's side, we've got this circlip that's on the end of this CV shaft. And this is just gonna insert into the differential just like it came out. And so all you gotta do is make sure that you get this a good, a good push in and it's gonna click and it's not gonna be able to come out. So if you push it in and you can pull it right back out, it's not in enough. And I'll show you what it looks like when this cup is fully seated in that differential housing. All right, that's what that CV shaft looks like when it's all the way installed. You can see it's quite a bit of the way in there. And uh, I had to fight that new circlip, it didn't want to go in. You can put a little bit of grease on it and that'll help. But I want to show you guys what it looks like when it's fully seated. Now I need to move on to this side. I need to get this shaft into the wheel bearing just like I did on the passenger side. So I ended up coming from the back side there because this ABS sensor was in the way. You might be able to get it from the front here, but either way, whatever, whatever it takes to get this in, make sure the splines are lined up. You just gotta twist it back and forth until you feel it slip in, and then you should be through. So the process on this side is the same as the other side. You're gonna do the upper control arm bolts. You're gonna do the tie rod to get it reconnected to the steering. Then you're gonna reattach your brake line, your ABS lines, and you're going to install and torque down your axle nut. Now that both of the CV shafts are installed, it's time to slap the wheels back on and get this thing back on the ground. All right, I've thrown the tires back on and the front CVs are all installed. Now let's flip around to the rear of the vehicle. I'll show you how to pull out the rear CV axles. I've started to tear down the rear CV axle and I want to show you a few differences. So at this point, I've got to the spot where I normally would have been in the front where you take off the dust cap and you pull out the cotter pin. One note about this dust cap. As you can see, I damaged this one pretty good on the way out. And it's because it was just seized in there. I had to punch this all the way down so I could get a pry bar in to pry it off. So when you're doing this, you might want to order other ones. Cosmetically, this will be hidden behind the wheel. However, um, this is actually to keep corrosion out of this. As you can see, this one's doing a poor job, but you don't want to just run this open because this axle nut is going to get corroded. And you do not want that because it makes it so much harder to get this off. So when you're doing this, you might want to go online and order the caps to replace this. That way, when you put them on, you have fresh ones. The other thing I want to point out is this axle nut in the rear is a different size. So the fronts are 32s. These ones in the back, this is a 36 millimeter. So you're gonna have to run out and get a huge socket for this one, 36 millimeters. Um, so I'm gonna get zi that zipped off and then I'll show you how to take this CV axle out. Just like before, this guy is seized into this wheel bearing. So I'm gonna use my air hammer to punch it out. Now I'm underneath the car and I'm gonna show you how to remove this rear CV axle. Now, the thing that's fun about this is these are actually the same on both sides. So they're identical. This one is the exact same as this one. So I'm just gonna show you how to do one side and then that'll be enough to show you how to do both sides. So this is very similar to the passenger side CV in the sense that it's bolted to the rear diff. It doesn't actually have something that slides in. This companion shaft here, this is what actually slides in. This is the hub end that goes into the differential. So you don't actually have to remove that. All you have to do is remove these bolts. These are gonna be a 14 on the inside and a 17 on the outside. And the way to get these off is exactly how you did in the front. You're gonna take, take a few off and then you're gonna rotate it. Then you're gonna take a few off and you're gonna rotate it. Before I pull this CV axle out, I wanted to show you this. Here's all this grease that's been coming out of this boot. So this boot is obviously leaking. It looks like from right here, but there's grease all over the bottom side of this chassis. So I don't know how much grease is left inside of this, but it's probably a good thing that we're pulling this out to rebuild it. Phew. As you can see here, the washer and the nut go on the outside of the CV versus the bolt is gonna stay on the inside and it doesn't have a washer associated with it. So that's all the bolts out. Overall, there are six. And as you can see, these need to be cleaned up pretty good. So I'll take a wire wheel to those, clean them up. But there's six and the uh, six washers, six nuts. So now that I've got that taken out, it's time to drop this CV out. And you can see here, 
The CV is loose in there. However, you can't really get it to squeeze past there while it's at full droop. So I'm gonna show you guys how I jack up this control arm. And when you jack up this control arm, you should be able to drop that CV out and then pull it straight out without having to disconnect anything else. All right, so it's hard to see behind that spring, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply the jack to the lower control arm. And I'm gonna just jack it up a little bit here. It's gonna find its nice spot in that arm. And all I want to do is jack it up just a touch. And as you can see, that CV is starting to move. As I apply a little bit of pressure on it, I'm not even lifting it off the jack stand. That'll give it enough clearance to come in here. And the whole thing will slide down and out. Then you simply release the jack pressure. And you're back to full droop. So now with the CV axle just hanging there, I can go back up to the front since I already loosened this up. It should slide right out. Here's that rear CV axle on the bench and ready for new boots. So I've got these boots from Luso Overland and he has been kind enough to label them. So this is the rear inner. So that's gonna be this guy right here. Comes with clamps and grease and then the rear outer. It actually has a different kind of grease with it. So I'm gonna trust that that's important. And here's this one. The important thing about this is to keep these separate because they are similar sizes, but they are not the same size. So they come labeled in these boxes. So we're gonna go ahead and leave these on the side where they're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and take an angle grinder and cut off these OEM style clamps and we're gonna get this thing torn down. Here's the inside of that CV with the boot pulled back, came, came back really easy. You can see this one's pretty beefy. And uh, once again, there's gonna be a snap ring in there. So the exact same process as the front, go ahead and get a pick in there and pick out that snap ring. And that'll allow you to separate the cup and the ball bearings. There is a little snap ring. Got that cup separated. Same thing as before on the front. You got this little snap ring in here. Go ahead and pull that off. Then you should be able to pull this off of the shaft. So there's the cup removed. Once again, this side with the lip is facing outward. This side is facing towards the shaft. So now I'm gonna put that aside, clean a little bit of the grease off. Go ahead and slide this boot off. This is our old boot. Then we can work on getting this other boot off as well. Other boot slides off just as easily. Now I'm gonna get this CV boot slid onto the shaft. With the CV boot slid on, I'm gonna take this grease and I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this grease up in this boot and into the actual CV shaft. Move it on to the inner side, same thing as before. Slide the boot on. Gonna, help, gonna go ahead and get this grease and drop it into the cup side of the CV. There we go. Get the ball bearings back on the shaft. Reinstall the snap ring. Make sure that's seated. Get 
Get your snap ring ready. Slide the cup on, make sure the ball bearings are all, I'm gonna clear it. You might have to squeeze them in a little bit. Get that in there, make sure it's starting to get seated into the grease. Put the snap ring in. Slide the boot back onto it. And one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use this OEM style clamp for the rear. It's different than the front and I'll show you how that works, but just kidding, I couldn't figure out those clamps. And so I decided to just go with the trusty old zip ties. I was able to get these plenty tight, took two to get around there, one to get around these. So now this has new boots, new grease, it's ready to go back in the car. All right, now I'm back into the vehicle. I'm gonna stab this thing into the wheel bearing on this side. Boom, goes in super easy. I'm just gonna let it hang here while I get the axle nut on. And then I'll do the same thing I did before where I jack this up so I can slide this up and then get the bolts inside of that companion flange. Got that washer on. Now I'm just gonna get this threaded on a little bit so that it doesn't back out of the wheel hub. All right, got one bolt in, gonna get another one in. It's good to get a few of these in, that way you know that it's square on the companion shaft. All right, I got three of those bolts in. Now I'm gonna let the jack down and uh, get, get it rotated, get the rest of them in and tighten them all down. So that CV is officially bolted up and tight. And it's time to tighten down this axle nut. Now, unlike the front, this is actually going to be locked in place. So if you have the vehicle in park, the drive shaft isn't going to move and you can put that tire on the ground and then this guy right here won't move. It's connected in a different way than the front. So this isn't going to spin. This axle nut also has to get torqued down to 188 foot pounds and the cotter pin needs to be put in. And with that, the wheel is on. This CV axle job is done. So there you go, guys. That's how you do a CV axle job on one of these Gen 3 Monteros. Now, I didn't film the other side of the rear because it's exactly the same, the exact same process to take it out and put it back in as well as the rebuild. So just watch that again if you need to go over it for the other side. But hopefully this was helpful for you guys. It's really not that bad of a job. Just go to Luso Overland, get the parts you need, do the work, pull it out, and then you'll have reliable CVs for years to come. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next one.